Yeah, enjoying the music, huh? Cheers, everybody. Gaurav is back with another exciting session. Oh, I need to sip a bit. Yeah. Great. So I want to kick off the session by saying two words. Highly skilled, very well skilled. Or let me put it in a different way. Highly qualified and well qualified. I believe, let me take some like 1,000, 2,000, 3,000. Let's jump back 7,000 year back in the era of Ramayana. There were two important characters. One is Ravan and second is Hanuman. Now, if you ask me who is highly skilled. Now, if I have to choose one, the important is that Ravan happens to be the very well, highly skilled individual. Everybody have heard the story that how much powerful knowledge he used to have. He has even given us the Tandav of like the Lord Shiv we used to worship. He happens to be the biggest devotee. Now, Ravan happens to be the most highly skilled individual in the entire story of Ramayana. But if you ask me, does he is the well qualified? We all know what deed he has done. And because of that deed, we understood that he happens to be just highly qualified, not well qualified. On the other side, if you took an example of Hanuman, he happens to be just a monkey or a creation of God out of that monkey. Do you consider him to be the highly, skilled, highly qualified individual? Absolutely no. He's well qualified. So in today's world, many people ask me that, hey, I want to do something great. I want to learn this, that. I want to clear the certificates. Ultimately, the most important part is that what you are doing and how you are doing. And for that, to be considered as a well-qualified individual, only technical skills doesn't matter. You need to be an active individual as well. You need to work on your soft skills also. You need to make sure that to be considered as a well-qualified individual, you should always be ready to give back to the community. And that's where I met this individual today. No. I don't want to take this part completely today because what I have understood that Cheers with Gaurav is always a motive that we have drive together to empower others. And few days back when I posted this post of doing today's session regarding the community upbringing, one of the uh, like friends over the LinkedIn, she reached out to me and she happens to be a host at many of the activities she does at the, her personal social media handles or for her college. So I thought of, let me have a co-host today for the session. So let me bring and ask her story. And she's going to take the entire session for today. Hey, Harshita, how are you? Welcome. Cheers. Hello, sir. How are you doing? Wow, that's really great. An amazing great. introduction given for you. I mean, it was Absolutely. so inspiring, motivating. And it's such a great pl uh, pleasure and honor to have, I mean, uh, Bart Farrell himself today on this uh, very platform. And I once again, you know, would love to, I mean, thank you so much, you know, for taking me and choosing me. You know, it was such a coincidental situation where, I mean, I just uh, happened to post a, a, a comment on his uh, post. And, you know, it was such a great, I mean, coincidence that even I didn't expect that I would be, I mean, getting into this. And I, re I feel really grateful, you know, to be live today with such high dignitaries here and it's such a great privilege that it would remain as a nostalgic reminisce to me uh, throughout my life Definitely. and thank you so much for the opportunity again so, so and i do, uh, means it's uh honor is completely ours and we should not forget <laughs> that it's all about the community that we create so we all want to be the uh, like not highly skilled individual we want to be a well qualified individual so exactly why don't you tell our viewers who is up for today? And let's have okay, the so I'm <laughs> Yes. So I'm going to unravel and unsnarl, you know, the uh, secret for this uh, this evening, you know. So all the viewers, you know, who is watching me live, good evening, everyone. It's really such a great uh, pleasure to be hosting here today. So I'm Chanda Harshita. My name is Chanda Harshita, pursuing my B.Tech Computer Science with uh, specialization in artificial intelligence and machine learning in lovely professional university. So talking a little bit more about myself, you know, as, uh, uh, as Gaurav Sharma sir told in the introduction that, you know, I'm a person who loves hosting, you know, and I'm totally into public speaking and everything. So yeah, I'm a person, you know, who loves public speaking, anchoring, you know, conducting and managing events like this. You know, it's, uh, it makes me very motivated. It keeps me uh, going throughout my life. So, uh, and I would like to introduce you all, you know, to the uh, main dignitary of this evening today. So any guesses in the chat box, like if you want to guess, you can. 
So, you know, I'm introducing you all, you know, the Mr. Bart Farrell on this very event today. Oh, my God, it's such a great honor to be introducing about Mr. Bart Farrell. You know, it is such a great honor, privilege and respect to interact with legend and icon, you know, from Northern California, uh, who is a versatile and multi-skilled in many fields and sectors, you know, like, I mean, uh, language teaching or coaching or talent management, conflict resolution with awe inspiring background uh, you know and educational background with who has studied in oriental and african studies you know in the university of london as well and also university of california santa barbara so his, his versatility and work experiences actually you know includes uh, you know he, uh, playing different roles in different domains as a dynamizer in data on kubernetes community also cncf you know the cloud native computing uh, foundation and also you know he's the ambassador of cncf and an associate professor and producer at Conta too, an English language instructor, a talent manager and a content producer. And the list just goes on and on. You know, there is so much to tell about Bart. And, you know, with this, I introduce uh, Bart Farrell, Mr. Bart Farrell. Hey. On the so before we bring so, on the screen, Bart, yes. Hashita, let me show you some magic around. I'll yes. play a video. Let's see some magic. The video yes, exactly. Up. You and Bart will be definitely on the screen for all the viewers. So here it comes, guys. Some magic around. In mid-2020, it became evident that it was time to confront the reality of running data on Kubernetes. But how could this be done? By building a diverse community of folks from over 15 countries eager to share their knowledge and experiences, putting their best practices into a common framework. We started weekly meetups with data engineers, DevOps, and SREs, CTOs, and all other kinds of profiles focused on the latest things happening in data. Podcasts, t-shirts, and community-built resources to drive conversations forward. So if you like data and you're working on Kubernetes, or even just thinking about Kubernetes, or maybe you just want to meet some awesome people from all over the world sharing their ideas and cultures, then come check out our website, our meetup, our YouTube channel, social media, or feel free to jump in our Slack and ask questions to be answered by people who know what they're talking about. Thanks so much for your time. Hope to see you in the community soon. And here we have. Wow, that's amazing. Wow. wow. Yes, from there, there. We, there you go. We have Mr. Bart Farrell himself, the man himself on our event. That's really great to have you, sir. It's such a great pleasure and honor uh, for all of us to have you today. And how are you, sir? Welcome to the show. Thank you so much for the wonderful welcome, Arshita. It's great to be here. And hello to everybody. Thank you so much for having me. I was just saying before we got started, um, it's nice with the pandemic that we're able to connect in this way digitally. And But the next thing I got to do is I got to go to India so I can see all of you in person. So anyway, thank you so much for having me. Uh, it's really such a great pleasure to have you and uh, I would like to tell a little bit more like how I got into this and the, the, the day when Gaurav Sharma sir, he posted the uh, post in the LinkedIn so I just came rushing and you know it was just written that it's all related with the soft skills and everything so I was a person you know who was already uh, very good at all this and the moment when I saw this post I was like very intrigued inquisitive I just wanted to you know dive into that I mean that was uh, really great and I really thank him and I also thank you so much for uh, having me on this uh, uh, platform very platform so even uh sir actually uh like there are so many people i mean who are very good at technical skills but then i think we lack uh only the communication which is the barrier uh, uh between articulating words and also technical skills so even i am a person who is also working on that so like sir i would like to ask you personally like you have done your bachelor's on religious studies from university of california as you are an expert and specialist on religious aspects now i would like to ask you like what is the essence and gist of religion like what is the culmination of a higher state of achievement in spirituality or a religion you know that can attain or reach i mean you know benchmark of how many people according to you has reached you know the extraordinary and exemplary state like what do you think like do you categorize or describe the personality of uh, such great achievers wow that's a really good question um that's, uh, that's a really you. good question that's a very big question and i think it's what's really cool about this this environment yeah. in, in the space that uh gaurav is creating in the in the, the tone that this conversation is going to have is really, really cool because these are things that these are big questions, you know, like and yes, whether I had this in my mind. Yeah, no, it's, it's a really, really big question. So like, 
you know, because I'd actually be interested to know, uh, many of you speak many, many more languages than I do, but the word religion in English um, comes from Latin, right? From the word religio in Latin, which means to tie, like to bind, to connect. So a religion is something that connects you to something else, right? So obviously, traditionally speaking, uh, a belief system, it could also be a physical place. There are many, many holy and sacred places in India. Um, and so obviously a place can also tie somebody and have a connection to that. What's interesting about all of that, and because everyone here is very familiar with the technological world. In the technological world, we talk about mm -hmm. communities. We talk about belief systems, best practices. We can talk about open source versus closed source. We can talk about different mentalities that go into the different ways in technology work. If you ask some people if they prefer Microsoft or Amazon or IBM, you can get into very intense discussions and conversations. So in the same way that religions require a certain set of beliefs to which we mm -hmm. subscribe, I think technologies can also do the same thing. Going back to your question about, um, about you know, the, the sense of developing yourself religiously or developing yourself professionally, I think a, what a lot of this comes down to is reflection. And so that's what you can never be, because I was saying this earlier before we started, because once again, Harshita, tell me, how old are you? So I'm 20. You're 20. All right. So yeah, once upon I'm a time. Sure more into, yeah, I'm more into spirituality. So I, even I'm a person like who is very religious, orthodox. So I just love exploring all this. No, that's great. And that's exactly it. But what I want to say is that just because yeah. you're young doesn't mean that you can't reflect. All right. Exactly. Um, there are there are older people that aren't very spiritual or aren't very reflective. And there are younger people who are extremely active in that sense. Yeah. So I think what's really, really healthy is that whether it's with technology or whether it's with spirit, spirituality is to constantly be checking in with yourself uh, to say, you know, where am I at? What do I think about this? What do I believe? Where do my beliefs come from? That's also interesting, too, um, because I'm from the United States and I grew up in my family and my school and things things like that. So there are a lot of different influences there. And in the same way, like I said, with technology, I think it's a similar thing is that it's not something that's static. It's not just when you're in college, you are in a journey that's much, much, much longer. All right. In your lives that takes place on multiple levels in an intellectual level, in an emotional level, in a spiritual level. So the thing is, is that really open your eyes, but not just the eyes that you have here. We have eyes oh, in, yeah, in many I different think. senses. So that I want exactly. to think of it that way. Yeah, uh, and that's really great. Such an insightful answer given by you, sir. Actually, I mean, what do you think about all the spirituality and like how? What's your uh, view on this? I mean, spirituality. It's a good question. I think that I think that everyone is kind of in charge of their own spirituality, which is a lot of responsibility. Um, in some yeah. ways, sometimes it might be easier, you know, if we just want to think of you know plug and play or something out of yeah. the box, you know, and that and that might be a little bit more perhaps on the religious side. But I think a sense of spirituality is really up to the individual to develop mm -hmm. that based on on how they see things. And I think Gaurav's doing a great job <laughs> by interacting and mixing these really old texts, you know, that are thousands of years old, but that are still extremely relevant nowadays. It's just a question of how we look at them and reflect. Um, yes. So that's how I would look at it. Okay, that's really great. I mean, such a great answer. And I feel like I got a little bit of clarity on what I asked. And I feel I mean, really grateful to have asked uh, such a great question to you on this platform. So with this, I also would like to introduce uh, Karthike onto the platform, who is also, uh, you know, uh, into our team. And he's also uh, doing his uh, intern, you know, at Terra Data, actually. So he's also passionate about cloud and open source technologies, you know, which is why he spends most of the uh, time in learning and all those uh, about cloud. So I think we can have Kartike onto this uh, screen. Yeah, thank you, Harshita, for the introduction. Hey, Bart. Hi, Kartike. How's so, it going? So it's going well. How are you? Great. Thank you. So, so before I would like to ask my question, I would like to say that uh, it's really a pleasure to be uh, having a conversation with you. I mean, like, uh, when the session was uh, announced, I went through all the data on community platforms. Actually, this was the very first time, to be very honest, to be very first on time, I heard about this community and it really surprised me that there is a community that is working on data, like data centric applications. So uh, since Harshita also already mentioned that uh, I am interested in open source and I, it's a long time that I've been working on Kubernetes, so that really intrigued me. And I really begged that I could get a chance to have a conversation with you. And my luck, my day just became lucky when Gaurav sir really announced that, yes, you'll, get, you'll be getting a chance to have a conversation with Bart. Well, I'm so very happy to be question, here. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. So my question to you would be that, Bart, that uh, you might agree that there are a whole lot of uh, open source communities out there that are working in Kubernetes domain. So 
what it what is that uh, made you decide about data centric applications like there are many more challenges and applications of kubernetes other than this which can require communities uh, you say perception but what is it that made you decide that only data centric applications needed this kind of attention very, this is a very good question and that's precisely why the community was started is because basically when kubernetes was was created originally they didn't take into account the idea of having data um, stateful workloads being being operated on kubernetes um so because of that up until i don't want to say up until now because actually you start talking to people and if you look at as early as 2019 there were folks talking about and probably even before that actually just based on my own personal research that there were folks talking about that already in 2019 about hey I want to get my data on Kubernetes and I want to do, I want to have stateful applications and stateful workloads. Um, so based on that, it was like, okay, if I want to do this, how do I start doing it? And that's what kind of drove the need to have a community. And since then, the response has been very, very good. We've had almost about 50 meetups. We're doing meetups now in, in Spanish. We're doing meet, meetups in Portuguese. We will be doing a meetup in Hindi at the end of this month. And I'm very excited about that. Um, but we're seeing lots of different use cases, folks from lots of different companies, from lots of different countries explaining, this is how I did it. I used an operator, or this is how I approached storage, or these are the challenges that I had um, when trying to migrate my data from one place to another. So that's, like I said, that's sort of the essence that brought about this community was this initial question of, if I want to put my data on Kubernetes, how do I do it? Um, and then from there, other people come in and say, oh, this is what I did. This is what worked in our company. And now we have almost a thousand people on LinkedIn where, like I said, we were having lots and lots of conversations, activities, and it's, it's very promising to see that response. So thank you for your answer. But, uh, like, uh, you said that, uh, the community has been growing since 2019 and even before that. So uh, well, I want to I want to say I want to say the sorry not the community the question our community itself was okay. created last year in 2020 in July. Okay, so uh, what can you say about that? Uh, how the community has created an impact uh, when it comes to data on Kubernetes? So is there really any changes going on in the Kubernetes that are going to drive the applications that are data centric? Like, uh, is there any impact that you have observed in the uh, Kubernetes community, which your community has created? Ah, very good question. Um, the thing is, we are, <laughs> it's a very good question, is that we are still very much in a in a growing space. So what we're very excited about is that uh, next month on May 3rd in KubeCon, we'll be hosting a co-located event, which will be 100% free, so all of you are free to attend. Um, but basically, what we're starting to get to the point now is how to sort of codify the knowledge that's related to data on Kubernetes. And I'm sure you're very much aware of all the certifications that are out there for certified community, uh, certified yeah. Kubernetes administrators, developers, etc. The Our idea is to eventually have one that could be called a CKRE, like a Certified Kubernetes Reliability Engineer related to SREs or DBREs. Um, and the idea behind that is that at that point, then we will be, like I said, creating much, much more of our own technical space. Up until now, though, there are lots of technologies that are featured in our community, like Cassandra or Kate Sandra or OpenEBS, um, technologies like that. Or yesterday we had a, an interview with someone who's working on the Litmus project, who's working with chaos engineering. And that also very much affects our uh, the, the conversations that are happening in our community. So like I said, right now, we're in touch with existing technologies. In terms of original technologies coming out of our community, it's something that we have on our road map for the rest of this year. Thank you so much for your answer. It was really nice having a conversation with you. And I really well, hope to join the community really soon. I really hope to see you there very soon. And I hope to see, I hope to get to see some questions from you because these are the insights. These are the questions, the, the difficulties, the challenges. These are the things that we need to hear. And I want to emphasize, uh, Karthike, how old are you? So I'm 21. You're 21. You're 21 years old and your questions are much more advanced than plenty of people who I've talked to who are 41 years old. All right. So I'm just saying this, not only to you, but to everyone who's here, whether it's the data on Kubernetes community or any open source community, don't worry about your age, all right? We're talking about the issues of soft skills. One of the things about soft skills, being confident, all right? Not being afraid to ask questions. There's no such thing as a stupid question, only stupid silences. So don't be afraid of that. And I think you're a perfect example of the attitude that's necessary. And like I said, coming in with those questions and asking for help. So anyway, thank you very much. Thank you so much, Bart. My I pleasure. Guess you made my purpose rightly mention that there is nothing stupid question at all. And questions are not decided on the base of age. And you know what, what, what I was saying before this? 
that yes, these people have very, very active mindset rather than me and you discussing about the thing. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, thank you so much, Kartike, for being here with us. We'll catch you in a few minutes. Okay. But I guess I we just want to talk about that Hindi meetup. A big, big, big shout out to Court for Cause for bringing that part up. I hope you are equally excited to host that meetup and join us here in India, right? Extremely excited, and and now I have to practice my Hindi. Um, so, <laughs> Definitely, so. towards the end, we'll make sure that you do something for us in Hindi. But okay, good. Please say hi to Kunal. He's uh, also joined uh, from the viewer side. So, big shout out to Kunal. Great work. Yeah. yeah, a very very big shout out. I am personally his big fan. What the work he is doing. So absolutely, absolutely incredible. Today. Yeah, yes. absolutely incredible. All the work that Kunal's yes. doing, all the folks in Code for Cause. And once again, a perfect example, Kunal's 20 years old. It doesn't matter what you're 20 or 21. It doesn't matter what your age is. What matters is what's in your heart, all right? And not being afraid. Just get out there and start doing absolutely. stuff. Yeah, absolutely. So let's take the conversation ahead. Let me bring down Harshita back and let's see who is next with us. So, Harshita, yes. who is so next? yeah, so it was such a great uh, question by Kartike as well. So we have so many questions coming up on. So next up is Sunaina, you know, who is also a first year uh, CSC computer science student, you know, who is a person who loves, she's a constant learner. Like she is a person very inquisitive of learning uh, so many things. And I personally came to know that she loves interacting with people like you. And so let, uh, let us get her back now on the stage. Yeah, Sunaina, right. welcome. Thank you, Harshita, for introducing me. So, hello, Bart. I hope you are doing good. I'm great. Thank so, you, Sunaina. Yeah. Yes. So, Bart, I want to ask you that uh, as I am a student, I'm a completely beginner student who is doing coding and learning programming languages. So, I would like to ask you that what things you as a student did in order to accomplish your goals? What difficulties you faced and what were the first projects you were working upon? So can you please give a brief discussion about that your journey from a student to a professional? This is a really good yes. this is a really good question. Um I think you know if I had to go back in time and talk to my younger self when I was in university, I probably would have said don't worry you're going to be fine. Um just because I think sometimes whether you're younger whether you're older, sometimes you're in a hurry, you really want the answers right now, you want everything to happen in the moment and life unfortunately doesn't work that way. Unfortunately and fortunately you all have to understand what we all have to understand is that we are all on a journey. And I would say many different journeys as we were talking about previously with Harshita about uh, spirituality. Also, educationally speaking, you may start with C++, you may start with Java, you may start with uh, .NET, you may start with JavaScript. Don't worry about that. It's just a process. It may not be your favorite programming language, but it's going to help you learn things later on. Um, so what I would say is that a lot of times, sometimes in, in university or in life in general, we may not enjoy 100% of the classes that we have. We may not enjoy 100% of the professors that we have. Don't worry about it. It's just part of the experience. And it's part of what you can take out from that, all right? I believe this. I believe that there's no such thing as a waste of time. It's always just a question of the insights and the learnings that you can extract from every moment. So what I would say to any student is try lots of things. Don't worry about failing. It's going to happen. It's part of the process and, and you're going to be fine, all right? If I can make it, everybody else can too. So don't worry. And if you're here right now participating in this conversation or even just listening, you're definitely already on the right track. Um, I hope that answers the question. Yes, uh, it was a satisfactory answer. Okay. So, but next, my next question is that uh, if we want to start the open source, then uh, how can we, what are the procedure, what is the procedure of starting this? Like Very how right. can we this is, continue? This is, a great question. this is a great question. Honestly, there are people, uh, Gaurav, and I'm sure that Kunal can answer this question even better than I can. But basically is that in the same thing is like with trying new stuff, go out there and find a community, go out there and find a Slack channel. Obviously, I have to obviously I have to talk about the data on Kubernetes community, but not just the data on Kubernetes community, but also the CNCF. All right. I'm very lucky to be an ambassador for the CNCF. And I insist everyone has a home in the CNCF. There's a place for everybody. No one is too much of a beginner. No one is too advanced. All right. That's impossible. Um, everyone can participate in the CNCF, even if they they just started coding today. All right. It doesn't matter. You can attend what's called a SIG, which is a special interest group, all right? And you will be welcomed. The only commitment you have to give is one hour per week to attend the meetings. And even if you can't attend the meetings, then you can watch the recordings on YouTube. You can read the documentation. There are many different ways that people can help out. Um, so just go with an open mind. Um, say that you're interested in participating and someone will help uh, help find you a place to go. 
the CNCF is obviously one place. There are other open source um, communities. There are tons of other places you can you can find and start interacting. It's just go somewhere and start connecting. I can say in my experience in the CNCF has been extremely positive and I've been very, very welcomed. And I'm sure Kunal could say the same thing. Um, but my, my biggest recommendation is start start looking today for a place that you can invite. And if it doesn't, if the first place doesn't work, don't worry, don't be discouraged. That's life, it's okay. Try a second, a third, a fourth, a fifth, a 10th place. You will find your home, all right? But the main thing is, is start doing it now because it's one of the best ways to meet people from all over the world, to hear about new opportunities, to hear about new technologies, and to be able to show the knowledge and skills that you have. Okay, so thank you, Bart, for answering my questions. I'm really feeling motivated after you have answered my questions. So that was all about this, my questions. Fantastic, thank you, Sunaina. Very, very good questions. I wanna ask you, Bart, uh, like preceding uh, Sunaina's question, do you remember the first time you made an open source commit or when was the first encounter you had for the open source world? Wow, that's a good question. Um, <laughs> the first time the first time I actually remembered hearing about open source when I, when I, it was when I was in university. Um, but once again, uh -huh. I didn't study computer science, but my 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 roommate was involved in computer science. And so he was I remember in forums on Reddit and related to uh, to Linux and Ubuntu and things like that. And so I was like, wait a minute. So multiple people from different countries can work on a software program simultaneously and, and, and they're doing this for free. Um, and he was like, yeah, like it's of course. And I was like, I, I just couldn't believe that. But then from, from, and this was many, many years ago when everyone here was very young and some people may not even know this is in 2005. Um, so hearing about it then it was like, I couldn't believe that something like that existed. So since then, I've always had an interest in the open source in the open source world, and now much more more so because of what I'm doing in the community, is that it's and I think more and more companies are realizing that this is the way to go, um, not just for their technological benefit, but also from the talent benefit. The more you open yourself up, right. the more transparent you are, and I think it's a good example not just for open source uh, software projects, but I think that we ourselves as people need to be more open source in the sense of being transparent, allowing others to help us out and also knowing that others will allow us to do the same. Right. And I guess uh, I have always believed that even my first encounter was during my first year of college when I got to the same experience that everybody can collaborate with each other. We can drive the innovation together and we need not to pay for it. Oh, wow. This is something I have to do it. But eventually it took five years. And when I see these old students working and getting a chance to work in the communities which is being started by people like you, I guess this is literally unimaginable that yes, people are doing so great for the community. And all thanks to you, Bart, for bringing the data on Kubernetes aspect because according to my personal experience, we'll need these sort of connections. Because for me, rather than contribution, open source is also more important about networking, mm. right? And that's the reason I'm giving chance to all the individuals in one or the other uh, like sessions that I do so that they get to interact with you and people like you who are doing great for the community. So I guess it's time to bring somebody more. So here, Ashida, who is next with us? Yeah, hello. So we have some uh, curious questions coming in, some inquisitive questions, some general technical questions. So let's see what Ishika has uh, uh, has to ask now. So next up is Ishika. Ishika, you know, she uh, is a front end developer and uh, she's on her way to become a full stack developer right now. And then uh, she's an open source contributor. And yeah, she I mean, loves photography and there are some very good hobbies she loves to have. Uh, so let's have Ishika onto the platform. Yeah. Very good. Hi, Bar. Hi, Ishika. Yeah, it's so nice meeting you. You too. Uh, how are you doing? <laughs> yeah, I'm great. I can't believe that these questions are incredible. Anyway, so uh, go for it. Yeah, also, I really wanted to tell you, I was going through your LinkedIn account, and I really like the way you rap. I really like the energy and the message that you were spreading around. I, I love it. OK, um, so my question to you is uh, regarding open source. So um, how can one use it for commercial usage? And what's your view regarding the security in it? OK, regarding commercial usage, OK, there's a lot of different things. But let me say this, is that um, 
all of you are already well aware of this. If you're on LinkedIn, you're on Twitter, you're here in this conversation right now, the really yeah. important element of personal branding that goes into whether it's open source or anything else is that it's mm -hmm. not, it, it's generally, I'm not telling everybody that, and I'm not saying that everybody has to have a YouTube channel or that everybody needs a this or that, but find a way to make your, your work visible. All right. Is somebody necessarily going to pay you directly for the stuff that you're doing? Maybe, maybe not. But it's a really, really good way of seeing, wow, this person's determined, they're collaborative, they're interested, they're creative, they're doing their own thing, even if they're not being paid. And so I think it's very, very important, no matter what you do, is always have something in parallel that shows another of the different kinds of talents that you have, and also showing that you're not afraid to share your stuff with other people and open yourself to the world. Is everybody mm -hmm. gonna like it? No, but don't worry about that. All right, that's that's okay. It doesn't matter if it's if it's music or if it's film or if it's open source software. Um, I just think it's really really important to find places to share it, um, to get feedback from other people, to ask questions. People that are experts like being asked questions because it's a way to show their knowledge. So if you have an open source project and you show someone who's really good, hey, I would really appreciate your feedback. That person's going to know. A, this person has technical skills, and B, they're very determined and motivated. So those are two very, very positive things. Does it mean that you're going to get a job on the first try? Maybe, maybe not. But the point is, be proactive about it. Yeah, that is true. So uh, how was the experience when you started with the, with the dog community? Oh, like very good question. So <laughs> at first when I started, uh, I was a little bit overwhelmed because, um, as, as I've made very clearly, um, made very clear is that my my technical skills are not terribly strong. And I made that clear to the people that were organizers. Like, just so you know, like I'm not, I'm not an extremely technical person. But luckily I have a wonderful team of people from different companies that help me prepare the interviews because we're dealing with people that have PhDs and machine learning and people with a lot of experience. But generally in my experience, if you're very transparent from the very beginning, as all of you have been saying, look, I'm a 20 year old student. It's like, that's okay. All right. It's a question of what expectations do we have? So at first in the beginning for me, it was a little bit intimidating, but now after having done about 25 different meetups and actually have another meetup today after this wonderful conversation with all of you, um, I'm much more comfortable doing it. And, and you just have to know how to interact with people. So like I said, but in the beginning, it was, it was a little bit overwhelming because the technologies are very strong, right? In the Kubernetes yeah. space in, ge in general and in the data on Kubernetes space because it's so new, even more so. Um, so, but I like challenges and I encourage all of you, like we always say it this way, you don't have to step outside your comfort zone. You have to expand your comfort zone, all right? And you do that mm -hmm. by trying things that you think, I don't know if this is really for me. The worst thing that can happen is it doesn't work and you move on to the next challenge. So that's what's worked for me. Yeah, and um, thank you for having me. Oh, thank you for having me. I'm the lucky one to be here. I Oh, and sorry, I didn't answer your question about security. Um, that's yeah. a really good question. And honestly, it's something that we talk a lot about in our community. And I just talked about yesterday when I was interviewed somewhere else. Security very frequently for a lot of folks is something that they implement on day two, day three, day 10, or much later. It's never too early to be thinking about security. It doesn't mean that you have to be paranoid, but look at what just happened with Facebook, 500 million yeah. users, you know, losing their passwords. LinkedIn is having a similar problem. Um, a similar, you know, the, these things are happening all the time. So you really, really, really want to have some kind of mentality about security as early on as possible. Um, it doesn't mean that you have to have such a controlled environment or be paranoid, but you want to be able to develop your, your projects comfortably. So it's very recommendable to get some kind of security knowledge, particularly in the Kubernetes space. Yeah, thank you. My pleasure. Hey, Shiga. Great question, though, means definitely every single time you bring down some great flavors to the questions. So thank you so much for being with us. We'll catch you in a moment. OK, thank you. So now talking about Bart, I mean, there are a few individuals. I was just going through the chat, and uh, there is a specific person I want to highlight. I also did a session with Shamshir. He happens to be a senior software engineer at Red Hat. He said that he is turning out 32 last month and now preparing for CTA, Certified Kubernetes Associate, and he would love to join your community. Why don't you tell our viewers that if somebody wants to join the doc community, what will be the official process? It's a oh, very good question. It's it's super easy. And actually, to, to address the uh, the gentleman who was asking about uh, taking the exam, we specifically had a meetup last year with two, with two uh, people that had just um, taken the CKA exam so they could share their experience without sharing any sensitive details. Um, but basically because there's a lot of preparation that goes into that. 
Um, but to, to answer your question about joining the community, it's super easy. All you have to do is go to dok.community. Um, and then from there, you can you can jump in our Slack. You can register for the meetups. Uh, we have our own page on meetup.com. We also cross post with a uh, cloud native data management group from Bangalore because um, we have a lot of we have a lot of community members that are from India. So interacting with a lot of folks from out there. Um, but yeah, it's super easy to get involved. And then you can just jump in our Slack. You can ask questions. You can participate. You can share resources. I'm serious as well, too. A number of you have contacted me on LinkedIn and I've told you that I would be interested in having some and some of you on to give a talk. You are never too young to give a talk. Um, you can get have a talk just to ask questions, but I think it's really important right. that our community, as well as all communities, exactly where you're doing, Gaurav, which is amazing work, is to let give young people a space. Everybody needs to give their first talk. Everybody needs an opportunity to have their first podcast. And if you want to do it with me, you are all more than welcome. It's just a question of scheduling. It doesn't right. have to be a, a master class about data on Kubernetes. I'm, I'm interested in hearing about all sorts of open source projects. So seriously, if you want to get some airtime or, or have some recordings just to get practice, I'm happy to do it. And even I believe when we were doing the first interaction, I officially want to say sorry because we lost the track somewhere down the line. I got some here and there work and I, we lost the track. But the thing changed my mind back again and bringing to the roots is that when I started this April month that I want to give back to the community. I was hearing one of the podcasts and where somebody said that there will be some individual who is lesser fortunate than you. You don't have an age where you decide that, hey, now I'm going to give back to the community. It right starts the moment you decide that, yes, I can bring some value to somebody else. And for me, money doesn't matter. If I can bring smile to somebody's face, I guess that is my biggest earning. Right. So I'm doing it for that cause that. People, when they come out on the screen and when they love to share their experience, I guess it make me feel happy and make me feel that I am the chosen one to give this part to others. If I have a professional connects, I believe it should be the thing. So there is another question coming out of some share. He just want to share this part that now he works for a great community called Istio, mm -hmm. which runs on Kubernetes to simplify microservices. So he's a great resource. So I, I will, uh, I'll share down the uh, link for your Twitter and LinkedIn. And though I have already pasted all the links available to get connect to Bart in the description, guys. So please go out and check it to the things. Bart is very welcoming. Every single time you go and you will find something great out. So some share, I'll personally connect with you as well. But now it's time to bring on somebody else. So let's see, Harshita, who is next? Yes, so we have another one having here now. So let's see what Harshil Bharadwaj has to tell us. So, you know, Harshil Bharadwaj is also a third year of BTEC computer science specialized in DevOps. So he's a, he has a keen interest in game, gaming development and React Native. So let us hear a little bit more from Harshil. Yeah. Oh, I think. Okay, good. Hey, yeah. how's it going? So like all these question was like amazing, but being a student, there always a mistrack in like someone's mind. Like there are too many skills to acquire, which skill will boost up my knowledge and which skill our industry is looking for. So according to you, what's the roadmap for students to pick up specific skill sets according to their needs and their industry development? Oh, that's a very good question. Okay. Wow. Um, we could probably be here all week uh, talking about this one, but that that's a really, it's a really good question. I think, I think to answer that though, is that one of the best things you can do. And that's also why the importance of participating in communities, open source communities and other communities is finding those professionals and asking them directly. So you said you have an interest in DevOps. I would recommend talk to people that are in DevOps. I can recommend people that I can recommend people that you can follow, that you can interact with directly. Um, that could give you a better idea about like, if I were you, I would start looking at this or studying that. Another thing as well, too, that you can do, and we have a jobs uh, section in our in our Slack, is just to see what companies are asking for. And also the CNCF has a wonderful jobs posting where you can find hundreds of different jobs. So that way you get a better idea of like, these are the things that companies are looking for. Do some companies want people to be certified? Some, some companies expect folks to have a, a master's degree. Other folks, it's just going to be doing a coding test. So I think a lot of it kind of depends on what, what is it that you want to do? You know, what is it that you, that you find interesting? And then based on that, how are you going to get there? 
once again, though, is that I think those are, we can talk about like the hard skills, whether it's certifications or um, uh, showing a certain skill level through a coding test. But then the soft skill side of it, as we've also been mentioning, which is extremely important, is all these human interactions, meeting folks from other countries, um, participating, what Gaurav was saying as well too, if you can find a way to make somebody happy, that's just as valuable as, as putting somebody else in your repo, right? Like that person, something we say a lot in the CNCF is pay it forward, right? Or something that we that I learned in religious studies is that it is in giving that we receive. The more that you give, the more that you get. Um, so I think that's a really, really important thing, no matter what sort of professional career path you want to go into. Going back to the more technical side, I would look at those job postings and I would I would talk to professionals directly to say, what would you recommend that someone in my position do if they would want to get the attention of a company like yours? And uh, like this, this really answered my question well. And uh, I think the next question that I have is like really amazing according to the student's perspective, because uh, you have been a student yourself. Like every student goes through a phase when they start learning a new thing and they almost every time target big giants like Google, Microsoft, and so and so companies. So they plan to get placed in those companies. But along the path, they forgot that there's some opportunities that are bigger than them, but look small, like opening your own community and or opening your own startup and like building your own idea to a path that you can one day become a big giant. So like you yourself open a community. So like it would be really amazing if you can throw a light upon like with specific steps and how to connect to specific peoples to like make them agree to join your community and start building specific steps over to a particular growth. This is a great question. And because I understand is a lot of people have their eyes on those IBMs, those Googles, Microsofts, et cetera. And it's, that's not a bad thing, but you have to understand is what we say in England, you know, that there are many fish in the sea, you know, so don't limit yourself only to one specific career track. Once again, you're also very, very young. This is a process. This is a journey. It may take 10 years to get to Google. That's okay. It just means it's a 10 year process. That's fine. As you mentioned, there are startups you can, and also as well too, either participate in a community, or if you find that if many startups and many companies and many communities start because someone is looking for something that they can't find existing in the market. So if you see that like there's a very specific thing in DevOps that no one is talking about, you can start that community. You can generate resources and you can become, we can say, the driver um, of, of people that, that have those common needs. And then when you go to a Google or a Microsoft or a Facebook and they say, oh, you started that community when you were 20 years old with no budget and no resources, that's the kind of person that we want to work for us. So like I said, that... Those, the connections that you will establish with other people and the personal branding that you'll be doing for yourself is, is extremely valuable. So don't worry if your application doesn't get accepted the first time or the first 10 or even 20 times from, from these major, major companies. Give yourself some patience. Give yourself some space. The main thing is to be proactive, be meeting people, and to be actively generating stuff and then sharing that with some kind of a community. Thank you so much, Bart. Like Thank you. you. Really answered the questions like in a wonderful way. Thank you. Thank no, you I really, it is me. a very, very good question. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much, Harshil, for being here with us. I'll see you in a minute. Okay. So, people out there, please feel free to put down questions for Bart. Now, it's time to take your questions as well. Now, somebody in the chat has asked a question saying that, Can I get a chance to be there? I guess for Cheers with Gaurav. It's open book. There are a whole bunch of podcasts which are lined up. And for Bart, Bart, if somebody wants to get featured at your channel or with you, how it can it is possible? Contact, or not? contact. Yeah, yeah. It's totally possible. It's all a question of context because we can look at these things in different ways. One thing is yes. when I'm when I'm wearing my <laughs> we want to think about it this way in terms of hats. When I'm wearing my date on Kubernetes hat, you know, that's obviously one thing specific to our community. But yeah. if someone just wants to have a conversation about like what they're doing with open source or things like that. I can totally do that more just on the CNCF side, encouraging folks to participate in open source projects. So like, that's not a problem at all. Or another thing that I do for folks as well too, is that sometimes after having a conversation um, just by Zoom, whatever, it can be a 15, 10 minute conversation, then I take the key points that that person has mentioned and then I create a post on LinkedIn so that other people get to see, oh, this is who this person is. Yes. That's something, and for young people, and for me, it's a pleasure. Like I said, what you were talking about earlier is that like, 
you know, one thing is what you do for your job, but what I'm doing right now with all these wonderful people here, I would pay to do this. Um, so like, like I said, all you got to do is contact me and then we just have to find the correct angle, right? The correct way is that, is it for this kind of interaction? Is it for this kind of community? Then we can take it from there. So yeah, I just encourage everybody just contact me directly. Definitely. And I believe Vishnu definitely reach out to us. So there is another question coming out of uh, your way, Bart. He is saying, Bart, can you please tell us the roadmap for Fresher to DevOps? I guess Ooh. before you answer that, I can say, go ahead and join Doc Community. He has a whole bunch of professional clinics which can guide you. <laughs> Yeah, that's, that's 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 a really good. And the thing is, actually, on our our event on May third that we'll be doing in KubeCon, and once again, just to repeat it, um, it'll be totally it's totally free. Also, if you want to get free tickets to to KubeCon, all you need to do is contact Kunal because he's he's working directly with the CNCF on that because students can attend for free. We're going to have a talk though specifically about the journey from being a DBA to an SRE, so a more traditional database administrator role, to then becoming an SRE, and that's more our target for um for the data on Kubernetes community. Going back to the DevOps thing, you have wonderful folks that are also in the DevOps Institute um, that would be happy to answer to address some of those things. Um, lots of great folks to follow on Twitter. If you'd like me to make some recommendations, I definitely can. Um, but essentially, it's it's like I said, look at that final goal. Look at that technology stack. Like going back to what uh, Harsha was asking about, you know, like if I want to become this kind of professional, what are the things that I need in my backpack? You know, like what are the skills I need to be acquiring? Take a look at a job posting and see the stuff that they're asking for. And then based on where I am right now and based on where that is, what's, like I said, what's the roadmap? For DevOps in general, eventually you are going to have to be thinking about, you know, am I going to focus more on Amazon? I'm going to be focusing more on, you know, on Google Cloud, Alibaba Cloud. Which one of the clouds do I want to be interacting with first? There's no wrong decision to make there. Whatever one you find more comfortable it's more common nowadays to see multi-cloud or hybrid cloud. So folks will start changing around from one to another. Obviously, you're going to need some infrastructure knowledge. So that's going to be important too. Um, but like I said, just have an open mind. Go out there, try different things and see what works for you. But once again, interact with professionals that are in that sector specifically. And we have some in our community. And if not, I'd be happy to recommend other folks that can help too. But definitely, that makes so much of sense for the community. And I believe open source key pillar is all about collaboration. And that's significantly mentioned you talking about a DevOps SRE or an individual who has adopted a roadmap which leads to success or failure for that matter. The only uh, thing is you need to be open to share their experience. And I guess we have no times to repeat the mistakes. So even listen to the failures. And that's how you grow. So thank you so much I, for that I, answer. I, no, no, exactly. Is that like the yes. only fear to have is a fear itself. I have failed hundreds of times, thousands of times. Everybody who has got anywhere in life has failed many times. Don't worry. Like I said, it's afterwards. And we're talking about spirituality. Reflect. Ask yourself, what happened here? What was the mistake that I made? How can I avoid that mistake in the future? Just give yourself some time and space to reflect. And it'll be okay. It's totally fine. Don't worry. Definitely. And also, I want to bring a point uh, which somebody has just asked. So Hirsch happens to be one of my teammate who designs the lucky thumbnails a big shout out to Hirsch as well so you just want to ask about the cncf ambassador program you recently became one of the cncf ambassador want to share some experience with us yes um very good question so basically there's no one specific only way to do it if you go to the cncf ambassador website they'll explain that it's basically people that are helping spread the message of the CNCF also because the CNCF has its own code of conduct and values and things like that that are very important to them. And one of those is diversity inclusion, which is one of my favorite things and I'm all about, which is one of the reasons why being here today, young people from other countries deserve as much of a place in all these open source projects as anybody else. Um, so that's something that's very, very important for me. In terms of my particular process is that I was informed by other CNCF ambassadors. They said like, hey, you should probably think about applying because of the, the work that you're doing. Um, and so I, I, I sent in my application and my application, I had to explain what it was that I liked about the CNCF and why I was enthusiastic about wanting to become an ambassador for them is that I, I told my wife this, like I, for me, um, being able to work with the CNCF has been the best professional opportunity I've ever had alongside with the community, which is now integrated as a community into the CNCF. Um, and so for me, it was, it was just really, really clear that I don't, because there are different kinds of involvement. 
you can attend a SIG, you can be a maintainer, you can be a contributor, you can be involved in lots of different ways. But specifically with being an ambassador, it means that I get to have wonderful conversations and learn from people like you. Um, so that's why for me, it was really, really clear. This is a path that I want to go for. Um, so I send in my application. If you send in your application once and you don't hear back, you can send in, you can send your application again. Um, there is a waiting process. Um, so it does take some time. So just prepare, be prepared to be patient. The main thing, if you want to become a CNCF ambassador, be extremely proactive about sharing stuff that's going on in the CNCF, interacting with different people in the CNCF, really understanding what their core message and values are. Like I said, paying it forward, being generous, giving as much as you possibly can, helping other folks get involved, um, making an extra effort to incorporate folks that normally don't have a voice or get a chance to participate in things like this. Those are the things that will be looked at favorably, I would say. Right. No, that definitely makes sense. I, I'm i lucky that we are interacting with you because you recently become a CNCF ambassador. So the things are also fresh in mind. And basically, I believe for any program to get involved, you require a vision. Until unless a mission can be one thing that, yes, I want to reach there, but a proper vision with setting up small goals and taking the things ahead definitely makes you successful or at least a learned man because yes. there you are having certain learnings and thank you so much for sharing that experience Bart. now taking the next question coming out of Mank, how can students get most out of the kubecon oh super good question all right this is a really really good question um and for all of you out there i thank you so much for asking this is that obviously there are a lot of talks all right and in so there are a lot of talks to choose from you can watch on demand uh, for the talks that you want to watch, I would highly recommend just like kind of creating a schedule for yourself because of the fact that it's online. It's not the same as going to an event in person. Um, so make sure that you don't watch. It's probably not a good idea to watch like five talks in a row. Like give yourself breaks, get some water, go outside, exercise, make sure you're you know, eating, doing basic normal human stuff. But what I want to say with that as well, too, is that a lot of the, for me, personally speaking, a lot of, some of the most exciting things happen in, in KubeCon, in Slack, all right? Lots of conversations, lots of people introducing them, introduce themselves, people working on open source projects in the moment, all right? So that's a really, really good opportunity. There are also um, mentoring sessions that you can attend that I think it's highly recommendable to try to take advantage of. Um, go and visit companies at their stands. As we were saying earlier, all right? If I'm interested in working at Microsoft, Microsoft's going to have a virtual stand. You can go there and say, hey, like, what are the things that your, your, your company is currently looking for? I'm studying this. Do you think this would make sense to be applying for Microsoft now or should I get certified first? I say Microsoft because I could say Red Hat, I could say IBM, I could say a thousand other companies. Like I said, take advantage of the social aspect of KubeCon as well um, right. to interact with other people. Regarding the talks that you do attend, Try to reach out to the speakers afterwards or ask them questions, right? Like I noticed you mentioned this. I, they're going to answer, right? The worst thing that can happen is that they're too busy and they forget. Um, but really use it as an opportunity to interact with people and to, to give feedback, to get feedback, I and mean, to establish connections. Also, you have to understand that the event is really intense. So maybe it's better to contact some folks like a week after when they're a little bit more free. Sometimes in, through LinkedIn, it's just too many messages or Slack or things like that. So don't worry if maybe you don't get a response right away, but just keep trying to stay in touch and eventually something will click. And I guess I want to make a point over here as well. Uh, you would agree that but many a times student does make this mistake. They reach out to a speaker in expectation of getting a job, which is absolutely wrong in my sense. Yeah. Secondly, they are just going to keep on posting thank you for this and that. Rather than I'll be more happy, like if I'm speaking at a conference, if you have attended my talk or if you have interacted with me, why don't you share your learnings with me? or at least to the wider audience. And then do tag me that, hey, I attended your talk and you did this fantastic job. Or even if you are one of, uh, like put down a feedback, do appreciate in open. And that's what the open stands for. It's for everyone. Share the knowledge that you gain rather than just posting thank you or like something. I believe uh, your views on that part. I completely agree. Um, is that is that the thing is you want to give the person an excuse to talk. If you write thank you, you say you're welcome. I mean, like I try to do that just out of courtesy because I'm I'm grateful if people say thank you. Yes, yes. But I'm not a KubeCon speaker, so or at least not yet. So maybe in the future. But like no, but I think it's a really good point. Is that give people an excuse to talk to you? And so, like you said, 
with the learnings, but then also furthermore, like additional questions. If you ask questions, yes. it shows it shows that you've taken a genuine interest. Also, do your homework. Look at other talks that they've given or other podcasts that they've done or blogs and say, I really liked your talk. I also saw that in your blog, you mentioned this, this, and this. Could you tell me a little bit more or what was the problem that you were trying to solve? Or I don't fully agree because we did it this way. What do you think? Like I said, those kind of questions, those kind of interactions are generally going to be much more beneficial. Echoing what you said, contacting someone will not guarantee you a job. So that's your expectation. Yeah. You're, you're probably going to be disappointed. It can help you get knowledge that can later help you get a job, maybe in a t completely different company. Yes. But don't don't create that sort of expectation. Um, the main thing is, is it's just a good thing to connect with people and to learn. That's the best thing. Right. And also, uh, you just mentioned about asking questions. I want to give a very perspective, which I learned during this COVID thing during the last one year, that the power of question is something that when in Mahabharat, Arjun asked a simple question, who am I? Why I'm fighting with my own family members? And Lord Krishna gave us the answer in a form of a book called Bhagavad Gita. Mm -hmm. So you know what the power of asking question can be, can be easily understand that even if he has asked, who am I? What is my purpose? And they give you a whole bunch of knowledge out there. So no question is stupid. He just asked a question, who am I? And I guess what a wonderful response he has got from the Lord Krishna. So that's way of asking the question. So be courageous. Go ahead and ask the questions, guys. So yeah. coming on to the next question, but uh, Shitaj has a question that open source opportunities with data on Kubernetes community. Very good question. So what I would say is, as, as I mentioned previously, is that like a lot of the technologies that we're working with, um, like I said yesterday, having somebody from Litmus, we've got people um, with with OpenEBS, we've got people for like uh, Percona that are working on open source databases. So inside our community, you can connect with tons of different people that are in, in different companies um, that are working, like I said, that are working on these different kinds of projects. And then from there, you can continue the conversations in Slack, or you can attend the meetups and then interact with those people directly. Um, so like I said, because we are still very much a new community, there are going to be a lot of things we're going to be building during the rest of this year as a community to create more original opportunities. But like I said, as of right now, one of the, the best things that we're doing is that like we're connecting to all different kinds of, of, of folks in, in the open source space and folks that are also in the, in the CNCF ecosystem. Right, right. And I hope, uh, Shitish, you got the point. Now, I'm getting some of the pings from my team. They want to ask you some more questions. So, Harshita, what question you have for Bart? Yes, Bart. So, like, I have one more question. So, which just kept me thinking. It was, it's just a thought provoking question. Like, you know, there's a lot of development and advancement in technology throughout the world, which has uh, provided us with a lot of luxury, comfort, and convenience at the same time, you know, posing a lot of challenges and problems. So, I think there's an immediate need to, you know, uh, restore and reestablish the balance in every field and sectors of the society. So, like, how to, how do, uh, I mean, how to breed and foster this ideal and noble value? Values, you know, using a religion, academics as a tool, and prevent further deterioration and destruction of human moral, ethical, and spiritual values. Wow, big question. Once again, we could be here all day or all week, but, uh, <laughs> but I think I think I think the main thing is here. I think it's a really good point. Balance, right? This is yeah, the question here. Is balance. The question of balance. <laughs> is that like is it's one and and also I think as well too is that just as much as we can be talking about artificial intelligence or blockchain mm -hmm. or data on Kubernetes or things like that. There are something that comes up very frequently in our community are human problems, emotions, mm -hmm. frustrations, anxiety, fear, doubts, all that kind of stuff, which is once again, why it's really important to, you know, mind, body, and soul, as we talk about that sort yeah. of, you know, equilibrium, yeah. depending on how you look at those different things. But it's like, it's good to go to university to study coding, to learn technical skills, but also dedicate some time to yourself, right? Like what, yeah. what uh, Gaurav was just mentioning, the question, who am I? is a question that's very scary for a lot of people, all right? Because exactly. we, you know, being original doesn't feel comfortable. We wanna be this, or we wanna yeah, try to be like this famous person or this singer or this football player. Um, being yourself sometimes is, is scary for a lot of folks, but I encourage you uh, to all of you, it's the best thing that you can do. The sooner that you embrace yourselves, um, mm -hmm. and I'm gonna take a big chance. I think the word in Sanskrit is moksha for liberation. Yes, moksha, yeah, yeah that's yeah. correct, yeah. Well, so like I said, is it, and, and cause I wanted to touch on this, you know, like the different words of, you mm -hmm. know, bhakti, shakti and and, and wow. moksha, and then also ahimsa, because, you know, wow, bhakti thinking, 
Bhakti, thinking about the sense of devotion, we can think yeah. about religious devotion. But like I said, you can be devoted to yourself. You can be devoted to others. That's how we get, like I said, communities provide a space for devotion to exist. Um, Shakti being, you know, the sort of power that each individual person I ha has, I think, through their, their skill set and their personal brand. Ahimsa through the importance of nonviolence, not to yourself yeah. and not to others. And not just in the sense of physical violence, but the words that we use, the kindness that we show or that we don't show. So like I said, I think all these... There's so many things that all of you already know that if you just apply in different areas, you're going to see great results. Wow, that's great. I mean, uh, that that really motivates me. The fact that you know, even you start. I mean, uh, uh, looking into all this bhakti, ahimsa, and like that's really great. I mean, uh, and also I think like what I came to understand from your conclusion is that we need to have a growth mindset. I feel so. The problem is that we have a fixed mindset. You know, we are just stagnant and stationary at the point we are where we are in at now. So I think if we have the growth mindset and if we have the subtle balance of balancing everything, I think then we can restore and reestablish the balance back again. I guess. Thank you, Bart. Thank you so yeah, much. Yeah. My pleasure. <laughs> Thank you. That's so nice to bring my area of interest. Thank you so yeah. much. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. It's super good. Okay. So wonderful, Bart. As you said that you're going to come out with some of the Hindi meetups for the doc community as well. So I believe now all our viewers are already known about what doc community is all about, what you do and how uh, they can reach out to you. So I have already pasted all the links out there in the description. So people, please feel free to go and contact to Bart so that if you have any queries or if you want to share any insight for the session, after the session, if you have any queries, reach out to him. He is a very open hearted person and he can help you in resolving the issue the way he can. Now, coming back to the part, to the Hindi questions. So let us try to learn some Hindi on the way. <laughs> oh, right, Bart. So definitely, if you have heard of our last few sessions, what we started doing is that we ask our speakers or ask our uh, like experts to do something for like all the viewers who are specifically watching from India. Yes. So as we are quite happy, and I believe that when I started interacting with you, I get to know one thing that life should be grateful not long right so there is a very famous famous hindi dialogue ki, uh, which is being said something like babu moshai zindagi badi honi chahiye lambi nahi so we'll help you to say the same line for all our viewers so let's can we try that okay very slowly okay. <laughs> awesome so let's try it and ask uh, uh let's me uh, help you with the phrase by phrase so okay. the very first word is babu moshai babu moshai babu moshai zindagi badi honi chahiye Ooh, babu moshai zindagi zindagi zindagi, zindagi. yeah badi honi chahiye but badi honi chahiye lambi nahi lambi nahi Oh my God. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'm destroying, I'm destroying your beautiful language. So no, 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 no. I believe everybody must have enjoyed. So all the viewers, guys, please do shout out in the chat, Bart OP for sure. So before I bring my entire team on the screen, let's do one signature step that we have started doing with all our uh, like podcast from last few uh, that we do. We raise our hands just like this and we do Chak De Fate. Okay. You have to say it along with us. Chak de fate. Chak de fate. Chak de fate. Awesome. I believe people must be like that. <laughs> so just bring down the smile for all of yes. us. And now, as we are on the top of our, let me bring my entire team to say thanks and whatever the experience they want to share with you. And okay. if they wish, they can also do this Chak de fate with you, as I have taught you now. So I guess now you are the Chak de fate expert as well. So, hey, people, how are you doing? <laughs> Yes, please. Yeah. <laughs> hey, bud. All right, let's Hello. do it. Let's do it. <laughs> yes, Shut let's it. do it. <laughs> it's the fun day. It's the fun day. This is amazing. This is amazing. This is amazing. <laughs> I, I hope everybody. I hope everybody in the audience is doing the same thing. You should all be doing it. Chuck the fun yes. and take a screenshot. Take a screenshot. This is the coolest <laughs> thing I've done all week. Oh, uh, anyway, this is an incredible team. I I am so lucky to have met all of you. I am I am so happy that we now know each other so that we can keep interacting. Um, seriously, I think I think all of you are doing such a wonderful thing. Everyone who's here in the audience as well, it's amazing that you're here attending. Now I'm curious. Uh, what are the next steps? What do you think about all this? What do we do from here? 
um it so was I, like very amazing yeah yeah please go on no no you can go you can. so i was saying yeah, that I mean, like, uh, I, the uh, path that you the path that you gave us to walk through like for me that i asked questions about how to like interact with those people who are actually working in those professional sectors and like how to acquire like acquire that specific specific skill sets that will be really helpful for my future uh, job or endeavors that i'll be doing and the second question like everyone like basically the the question was in general if we talk about like one person is like walking in a road and he wants to achieve something so the basic part of it is to interact with someone who has walked down the same road as you have did yeah i think this is a really good point and something i want to mention everybody else as well too is that you don't need to think of like i need to find the most advanced in your particular case i don't need to find the most advanced devops person in the world all right i need to find a devops person who's one or two levels above me you know what i mean like i don't you know what i mean like thinking about those like different stops along the road and the, the journey that we're all on um so that's the thing is like if you contact the principal site reliability engineer from Google, maybe they won't respond. But if you contact a site reliability engineer who's in our community or you know lives close to you, it's probably more likely. So once again, just keep trying. That's the main thing there. Anyway, good. What else? Thank you so much, Bart. Thank you. So I would also like to share my experience. Like it was really amazing interacting with you. I mean, I got to learn so much and the way how you interact, the passion you have, I mean, the vision uh, you want to do. So it's like, I mean, I got to learn so much and I really again thank uh, Gaurav Sharma sir and Bart Parrell, you know, I mean, for giving me this wonderful opportunity to be here. Thank you so much. It was such an amazing session. Thank all of you. <laughs> Very good. Ishika, Sunana, you are up. Oh. Uh, thank you so much for having us. It was a, a big opportunity for us. For thank me you. too. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, same thing. Thank you so Bad much, Vlad, for communicating with us. So I am very, I'm feeling very motivated and I will surely start contributing to open source when I will learn programming langu languages completely. And just, um, <laughs> I'm happy talking to you. Me too, yes, Sunaya. Yes, thank sir. you very much. Yes. Thank you. It was a pleasure talking to you, Bart. And I can confidently say that from today onwards, you'll be hearing a lot from me. Okay, good. Again. Good, good, so, good. Uh, Happy to help. So just a warning in advance that I'll be pinging you a lot with my lots of questions. <laughs> okay. I'll try to help as best I can. Yeah. Thank you so much, Bart. Thank you. That's the way I want to roll out. So, Bart, any, before we leave you, any final words for all the viewers who are going to watch across the globe? Any final words from your side, please? Yeah. Um, wow. Uh, just extremely grateful to be here. And I think the same generosity that you've shown by having me on here, if you show that same generosity to yourselves, if you take the time to reflect, don't get frustrated in the moment. Remember, this is, we're thinking about long-term processes, different kinds of journeys that we talked about, mind, body, and soul. So be kind to yourselves. Be generous to yourselves. Share with yourselves and share with others. And, and I'm very much looking forward to, to staying in touch with you. I really hope I get to be back on this program again. This was amazing. Um, so just thank all of you so much. Absolutely. Completely our pleasure. The team Cheers with Gaurav is blessed to have you hearing your words and doing all the Chakde Fateh and Babu Moshai life. Lumbi <laughs> honi So definitely that creates Chakde Fateh again. So that definitely creates a whole good vibes that you brings to our channel. Thank you so much, Bart. And definitely we'll stay in touch. I'll try to bring some more and more opportunities whenever I can. And I'll disturb you over the WhatsApp or the LinkedIn or the Twitter. Good. Definitely, yeah. definitely. And I guess it will make my day if you can help and if you can say to all the viewers that please like, share and subscribe to Cheers with Gaurav, please. Oh, please <laughs> like. No, no, please. I'm not going to say please. You must subscribe. And you should subscribe <laughs> twice. Create a separate account on YouTube and subscribe with that as well. Like, subscribe and share. Cheers with Gaurav. You definitely got to check it out. It is. Uh, I can't believe that I got to do this. And I'm just I'm hopeful that I'm good enough to be able to come back. So, yeah, that's all I got to uh, say. Definitely, but it's completely our pleasure. And namaste. 
from all the way people over here from India and across the globe. So namaste. Thank you so much for being here with us. Thank you. And namaste. for all the viewers out there, if you want to join us, something similar to live, there are a whole bunch of exciting sessions. Do follow me on LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, wherever you wish to. All the links are there in the description. Do follow me. Like, share, and subscribe to the channel. Share it with your friends that if they want to be here, all doors are open. Thank you so much. And In mid-2020, it became evident that it was time to confront the reality of running data on Kubernetes. But how could this be done? By building a diverse community of folks from over 15 countries eager to share their knowledge and experiences, putting their best practices into a common framework. We started weekly meetups with data engineers, DevOps, and SREs, CTOs, and all other kinds of profiles focused on the latest things happening in data. Podcasts, t-shirts, and community-built resources to drive conversations forward. So if you like data and you're working on Kubernetes, or even just thinking about Kubernetes, or maybe you just want to meet some awesome people from all over the world sharing their ideas and cultures, then come check out our website, our meetup, our YouTube channel,